Right. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Investing Tuesdays 2021. Uh, I know I can see so many clips playing, but let me first of all keep on with the introduction from whatever you're watching as from welcome. We are live on the NSC Facebook page and the YouTube channel as well. And I hope that the best thing that you can do right away right now is to, you know, let everybody else know that to gain perspective for 2021 when it comes to matters, finances, it's now. So you want to share uh, if you're on Facebook Live to, so that your friends as well can benefit. Uh, I think it will be all right for me to say Happy New Year uh, because, you know, we have had, uh, yes, a new year. I know it's a month down the line, but somebody say this. It's never too late to set a new goal or dream a new dream. Simply put, if you're already feeling like your finances are going haywire, it's not too late because today the panel that we have is going to help us at least get uh, an insight on what we need to expect and see coming 2021. Now, I know last year we had a series, a series just investing Tuesdays that were amazing, well packaged for you to understand and grow when it comes to matters investing. And in case you're coming in for the first time today, well, welcome. But for those of you who probably uh, missed a few or so, I just want to give you a taste of what you missed in Investing Tuesday 2020. Because right now we're going to discuss how 2021 will be looking like and the lessons that we took over. So take a look right now and then I'll be telling you something nice about it. What is an investment plan? Do you yourself invest? Is there a connection between NSE stock trading and forex. So how do we invest in shares? NSE offers training mm -hmm. on all asset classes. At the palm of your hand, you have so much information available to you. And there's no right time. For as low as 200, 300 shillings today, you can buy 100 shares of a company. What are some of the good picks you would recommend at this juncture? How does one balance uh, their share portfolio to minimize risk? How has it been so far? There are some spaces that you win, there are some spaces where that you lose. Markets are driven by information. If you don't know us, don't just invest for the sake of investing. All right, there you have it. A little bit of just some of the tips that we saw and some of the things that we expect to have uh, when uh, it comes to particularly this year. So what's the good news? All those clips, the seven series are still available. So if you visit the NSC YouTube page and the Facebook page, you'll still be able to take a pen and paper, sit down and get yourself on the journey to invest in. That is if this is the first time that you're watching us. For those of you who have been following us, yes, of course I said hello and happy new year, but remember, you don't stop investing. It's never too late to start. Now today, our title for the day is actually taking charge of your finances this year and of course looking at all the opportunities and perspectives that are being laid down this year. You know, it has been a year that most of uh, people have, have described this as unprecedented because of Corona, that was last year. So are we hopeful this year? What are the lessons we can take in? Now, joining me, uh, amazing panelists right here. One of them is an in-house guru. I call him that because, you know, he knows matters uh, uh, when it comes to finances. And of course, we have a lady in the house and another expert. Let me use that word. Who's going to demystify for us a lot about what to get to know. Now, very quickly, I'm going to mention uh, their names and uh, in Jiffy, uh, just quickly mention who they are and their titles. I mean, their profile. So Sheban Jaggi is uh, an ICF Associated Certified Coach uh, who inspires and empowers people and business to create wealth and live abundantly through engaging coaching programs, trainings, and talks. She is the head of training, communications, and customer experience at Centonomy Limited. I know that rings a bell because Centonomy has really done wonders to many people. Sheba has been a trainer at Centonomy since 2015 and is a regular speaker and trainer at various workshops and events. Uh, her key focus areas are entrepreneurship, personal finance management, and investment group financial management. Sheba is also an entrepreneur who has served in various boards such as Unthinkable Leaders and Founders Events Managers Association of Kenya, and uh, Isaac USIU and ICAD Investment Company. My goodness, welcome Sheba. Thank you so much. <laughs> Good to have you here. Uh, right next to me, my goodness, I don't know whether I should have saved this for the last, 
is a, is a man I honor and other I respect, Mr. Kennedy uh, Monyoncho. And very quickly, he told me to summarize his profile, so I'm going to read in a few sentences. So Minister Monyoncho has over 20 years work experience in both public and private sector. He has extent extensive experience in research, project management, training and capacity building, and personal finance management. I think that's where we want to underline, personal finance management. He holds an MBA in finance, Bachelor of Philosophy in economics, Bachelor of Science in Statistics, and currently undertaking a doctorate degree uh, in global business management. He's a certified city and guilds international trainer. He's also the best-selling author, a best-selling author that is, on how to save money for investment, how to invest in the financial markets, definitely, is it? My goodness, that's the word, you know, and uh, we hope surely to tap a lot from, uh, from him on matters uh, finances. Finally, the guest in the house, the guru in the house, the <laughs> do I call you a veteran? I think it would be fine. Uh, Mr. Irongo Wagema, Chief Officer, Cash Markets at the NSC, Seasoned Capital Markets Professional with experience across business development, innovation, ICT strategy. He has over 17 years experience, uh, 11 years in management in the capital markets and ICT, culminating in being the head of business development at the NSC. Over the course of his career, Mr. Wagema has honed various valuable skills such as strategy formulation, innovation and change leadership, securities trading, project and operations management, IT and corporate governance. I could r say a lot in your profile because your profile is not one page, <laughs> but I decided to just uh, use just those ones uh, for the sake of the day. And by the way, if you want to check more about Mr. Wagema, just visit the NSC website and you'll get to know him more. Gentlemen and lady, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Absolutely. You know, I, I, I may want to go straight to the scripted questions that I have, but please allow me to open up a session by asking you, uh, how is your new year? <laughs> and uh, in a nutshell, what are the lessons? Maybe you can share one or two that you have come to 2021 with, looking back at 2020, the unprecedented year for many. Maybe I would start with you, Mr. Wagema. All right, thank you very much. And also, a thank you to all our viewers who've been there. I think I've also been a uh, lawyer to this whole Investing Tuesday series. And also, thank you to Mina uh, for having us and also the NSC. So I'm really delighted. Um, and also, a special shout out to all that took action in 2020. Absolutely. Yes, I think action is really the, the differentiator. And two key lessons that I, I, I took from 2020. And you see, while we had the global pandemic, and it was really tough for every person. It, uh, it was affecting everybody. But in 2020, we had uh, new people who became trillionaires. We had people who became billionaires. And there were many that became millionaires. So my takeout was opportunity. Just hold on. Just hold on. <laughs> I don't know. Are you one of the people who became uh, something? <laughs> oh, of course, also in my own personal life. Uh, so, so that change also, it was a good year to be very frank. All right. In terms of, yes, it had its challenges. But there were also opportunities. So for me, the key takeout is that even in the midst of all darkness, in the midst of all challenges, there will always be opportunity. And the key takeout for all our viewers out there, the people like Elon Musk, he became the richest guy. He didn't begin in 2020. Oh, yeah. He began much earlier. So opportunity favors the prepared person. So always being prepared, that was key takeout number one. And key takeout number two, it was unprecedented times. So the key word was adaptability for me, where we saw many companies in the midst of all that, there was quick changing. There was quick change of strategy, also quick change of maybe even the direction that you're headed to. So if you see maybe like for the first time, we never believed or thought we would be walking around in masks. We never thought <laughs> uh, before 2020 that we'd actually uh, having social distance and working from home. So just that adaptability and change, I think it's very important and I'm taking that as a lesson even into 2021. Thank wow, you. Wow, thank you for that. And before Sheba comes in, I just want to prompt our viewers, in fact, because even our viewers as well had lessons that they took uh, from 2020 to this particular year. So. If you're watching and there's something that you learned in 2020, of course, the pandemic and everything else, but what is this key lesson? You can just share one and I'll be glad to read them through as well because we're here to learn from each other. So Sheba, over to you. And especially I would want you, even as you're speaking about your key lessons, to also touch on some of the lessons on personal finances that probably personally you took uh, from last year to this year. Yeah. 
key lessons for me, the very first one is nothing is permanent. And just being able to see that and understand that reminded me as a human being that it's so easy for us to really operate in a world of being comfortable, you know, what we call the comf comfort zone. And then the year strikes, January is kind of fine, and February comes, it's like, okay, we are doing this. And then everything changes. And what I, I am walking into 2021 20, is, am I ready for the change that is coming? Because even this that we're experiencing now is still not permanent. And also how flexible is my mind, right? Because brings me to the next point that my mind and my body is one of my key assets as an individual. And we saw that a lot in the last year. When you're not healthy, mentally, even physically, you will not be able to save your money. You will not even be able to invest because it'd be like your mental health is not in the right place. So I'm walking into 2021 thinking, if I want to be in a better place financially this year, I also need to think about myself and my health, right? And prioritize myself as well. So nothing is permanent and prioritize my health. And then let's make some money this year. <laughs> and let's make some money, of course. Very interesting, by the way, how we, uh, because I actually was reading through some article, how this whole pandemic really affected people's uh, health of mind. And it's important to really point that out, especially beca because before you invest, you need to be sober and well uh, in your mind up there. So Mr. Monyoncho, I, I can't wait to hear from <laughs> 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 They've spoken most of these lessons that um, many of us have learned. But for me, <clears throat> one key lesson that I learned, of course, there are a number of them. One is that within the business cycle, if you ever did that in your economics 101, is that there is always up and there is always down. However, last year went lower than a normal low. All right? Uh, come again? Yes, it went lower than normal. All right? And, and for me, it was a classic example of testing your preparedness and uh, extending your savings to the extent that it will take you. In fact, last year was a good time to check how wealthy you are. Yeah, yeah we'd have known whether you're wealthy in two months, three months, five months, or one year, or you're still wealthy. Because that's the only opportunity we had to say, okay, can I survive with what I have made or what I have been saving all this time? If I'm unable to survive on what I have saved or on my, my net assets, then I am not wealthy at all. I'm in trouble. So for me, it was, it was an opportunity to keep on engaging and test, time test the kind of savings and the kind of assets as an individual uh, that you have. And then, of course, for me, it was a great opportunity. I, I had um, several meetings with people who had never heard anything about investing and how to manage money. So it, w it was a big eye opener for the people who I work with to enable them to realize that there is always a downside in life and you better prepare for it. You better prepare for it. My goodness, so it was uh, a lot of life lessons there, right? <laughs> and now, of course, uh, I've taken notes, you know, uh, and I can tell you, I hope you're also taking notes from home. Remember, I, 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 this is a conversation that is going to inspire 2021, so I really want to tell my viewers that, listen, you better share this particular information with the people that, you're, uh, that you love uh, by just clicking on that share button. So, sorry, Maina. Yes. I know you're the one asking us. You're on the hot seat. Do you want to throw <laughs> that I'm, to I'm me? I'm sure you also <laughs> have some lessons <laughs> in, in 2020. <laughs> so, so to be fair, even on our viewers. Yes. What were yours? You know what, Gemma? I am the host today, <laughs> but it's okay. You can throw the ball to me. And I think, I think it has been said. For me, one of the key lessons in 2020 was uh, diversifying your investments. Uh, because there's somebody who closed down shop because that was the only thing they had to do. And what if another instance, and we are not predicting anything, 2021, we are really praying that God don't allow such a thing to happen again. But 
you know, you want to be prepared by saying, this is not the only place I get my income, or this is the only place that I've invested. And so, you know, you want to diversify. In fact, because Wagema, you're a man of the cloth. Uh, last I checked, sorry, not the cloth, I mean the Bible. It informs people, that, you know, it's good to invest in about seven ventures, you know? So I, I think it's important to have, let me call them side hustles for the ones who may call them that way, uh, or just have an extra, you know, income stream because, you know, one can go down and so you, the other one can t uh, really support you. So I think that's the idea. And I saw people do that. Hey, you're putting me on the spot and I have a lot of wisdom. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for that. <laughs> now, <laughs> let, me, let me get to Sheba. And my question to you is this. What are some of the opportunities uh, that you saw in 2021 that you can see that we can take to 2021? Uh, to grow personal finances, of course, after the difficult 2020 that was there. Are there some opportunities that you have seen that people could take to grow their personal finances? Yeah, mm -hmm. quite a number. And one that really comes to mind is one that you've just mentioned, which is increase your income streams. And it's because that was one of the opportunities that came up last year. Because many people, we saw how you know businesses went down. So if that was your only income stream, mm -hmm. you know it means that this year there is an opportunity for you to start thinking, okay, what else can I do? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, if you are salaried and you only had that one job, you know, and the pandemic strikes and your salary mm -hmm. was reduced, or you know, you you are always on the line thinking, am I next when it comes to redundancy letters? Or, or getting job cuts, then the opportunity for this year is, what else can I do? And so one key opportunity, and I'd like to connect with the point I just shared a little while ago about being healthy and being energetic, is the fact that the fact that we are alive right now and you're energetic, and you ha it means you have something to offer. So it's about time now I start, you start thinking, what else can I do? What else can my skill set do? What else can my experience do to help me start building my income and not just depending on one thing? And that is one of the many opportunities, one of the opportunities that I've seen. Wow. Yeah. I think I love that. Um, a, a lot of it is diversification. I don't know whether that's the reason why, and again, I hope I'm safe to say this. I don't know whether that's the reason why the government now has introduced digital tax, because there was a lot of, uh, <laughs> a lot of businesses going the digital way. Uh, Mr. Monyoncho, I don't know whether you have something to add on that, some opportunities that you could you saw last year that people should, uh, you know, really cross over with. A any comment on that? Just in addition to what uh, Sheba has mentioned, yeah, because oppor uh, the opportunities come in very many different ways. Um, so long as you, are learn you learn a lesson, once you learn the lesson, then you change or you are able to implement what you've learned, that becomes a very great learning. Many times you don't want to necessarily learn from experience, if possible. If I can learn from your experience, I don't have to go through the same experience. So you don't have to be broke to tell somebody that I, I also know what it means to be broke. You don't have to be broke. You can just see your neighbor. That life is not a good life. So I, want <laughs> I, ca I can learn from their experience than me necessarily going through experience. Yeah. So it, was, it is an opportunity for me uh, the way I saw it in terms of, especially the, the, the different sessions I had with them, with, with a number of institutions, one of the things that people came to realize that it is important, all right, as an opportunity to always plan. Yeah. It is always important to plan. In one session I had, individuals never, n never imagined that tomorrow they may not get the pay they've been get they got yesterday. So what they would do, they'd get the pay, consume all of it, and believe tomorrow I will get some more. Mm. <laughs> that was a terrible lesson, but then it gave them an opportunity to know it is important to plan. Someone told me it's important to plan as if you live for another 100 years. Mm. Plan. Mm. But uh, live as though you'll die today. <laughs> you know, so it, it makes it very vital for you to take charge of that lesson and develop that um, uh, ability to be able to see tomorrow. Yes. Wow, uh, and uh, Sheba, do you have something else to add on that? Yeah, and mm -hmm. there's another opportunity, and thanks for you sharing about 
lessons learned from others. Mm -hmm. Debt. Ah. There's a make, we have to make sure that now, going forward this year, the debt you take, the debt I take, needs to be good debt. Needs to be debt that is, you know, helping me to prepare for tomorrow. Because, you know, even if the president, you know, um, did this, uh, encourage banks and the Central Bank of Kenya to make sure that people are gonna have some moratoriums and some, um, we're going to get some favor when it comes to loans, see now. People still are having to pay debt, their loans once again. So That's you ha start have to think, start thinking about, so why did, I that, why did I take that loan again? And if I decide this year to borrow money, what am I borrowing for? Mm -hmm. We need to stop taking loans for personal consumption. Wow. Loans that are taking money from our pockets. That's an opportunity from a lesson yeah. learned. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. That's, uh, that's, uh, some people are being cut. Uh, you, by you those you kind of comments, know. yes. Okay, one of the, the big lessons, sorry, we go back to the lessons, but it's important to notice yes. that you could bury with as little money which you never thought. Yeah. Ah. What do you think about that? Yeah, it's bury and marry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, my daughter got married with 15 people. 15 people. Yeah, now we really got, we really felt the anti Africanism <laughs> of what happened last year, but it still happened. Yes. It means anything can happen. Mm. It all needs to be in the mind. I think that's what Shiva said. Mm. What are we thinking in terms of our mind? Is it possible to save? Yes. Is it possible to live without debt? Yes. Mm. Is it possible to come out of COVID? Yes. yes. We are here. This is 2021. <laughs> it is possible, but we just need to get our minds to think exactly the same way. Otherwise, if we know if the, 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 the different uh, um, things that came out as a result of COVID, mm -hmm. for me, it's, like an, it's an exciting opportunity mm -hmm. that as you get into 2021, you can say, you know what, 2021 doesn't seem as bad, mm -hmm. or it is because we are now used to it, yeah. we have adapted, yes. and therefore we can even see a better economy. We're even wondering this disease that has, or this um, uh, pandemic that has come doesn't seem to be as hard as we thought, mm -hmm. but we didn't have one person last March, and things were really bad. We have 100,000 now, yeah. and everybody's saying, well, <laughs> let's move on with life. Life is moving on. Life is moving on. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for those additions. You know, again, I want to bring you in, but before I do that, um, I just want to uh, preempt my viewers and tell them that we can't wait as well to get some of the lessons that you took over uh, as a result of how 2020 was and what you have learned uh, and crossed over 2021 with. Wagema, you sit at the NSC, you have seen how the markets were behaving last year, and we are talking about opportunities. I, I don't want to preempt or direct your question definitely, but you can tell the direction I'm going. Is there an opportunity here when it comes to the capital markets? Is this the best time to think about investing? And what are the lessons that you took out as well, f generally on the capital markets? Right. Thank yeah. you very much. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll just glide on what Mr. Monyoncho said. He had said it a bit earlier. They are, they, 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 there's the market going up and the market going down. So cycles are always part of the economy. The economy is made up of, um, I mean, going up and going down. It's just the different cycles that are part of life. And, and one of the key takeouts, uh, and I mentioned a bit earlier, was that last year we had trillionaires. We had billionaires. We had people who really made it financially. And what they had done is that they had already invested in solid ideas that then it just brought it out. So someone like the owner of Zoom, the guy became very wealthy. Mm -hmm. And also all the shareholders of Zoom. I, I, I remember watching a clip where they were saying Zoom is now more profitable than all American airlines put together. And that's just a tech company. So the same thing also applies even in the market where we had different opportunities, especially there were, there were areas that didn't do too well. So that nimbleness, that ability to adapt quickly is very important. So if you have your investments, don't be too attached to that investment. I think people get inv um, too attached, especially to investments where you think that this, this investment that I have, I want to hold on to it. So people who had invested some stocks in tr transport sector, Transport got a real hit last year. And then also hospitality. Hospitality is good, but with the COVID, uh, a lot of those sectors were greatly hit. Sectors that did well, 
are the financial services technology companies. Some of those started really doing well because uh, I think the government coined a new word. You know, last year you were learning many things. One of them was essential services. <laughs> so with essential services, you have to make sure that maybe the company or the opportunity that you're investing in, is it an essential services, uh, an essential service? So just to, to check and if you need to dispose of some shares, dispose. And if you need to acquire more of others, go ahead and do that. So we saw a lot of that. And then we have those resilient uh, instruments. So like uh, there's a term that we normally call hedging or risk management. So like the gold ETF, um, it is only one in, in our market, which is the ABSA gold ETF. That one really did well. Uh, good news for all our Muslim brethren and everybody else. It is Sharia compliant. And that is one of the stocks that people are hedging into. Kenyans uh, from an investment um, to a persona, they like to make money but it's also good to also learn to manage risk. So many people actually got to invest in that and that was really good. And of course, we have our bonds, which are doing too well. We have some good news. I think only last week we had a first listing, which was a bond that came up, Centum Real Estate, and it's a good opportunity to invest because it's available in the market. So also the bonds, both government and also the corporate bonds, those are very great opportunities. So some of those stocks are resilient mm -hmm. and they were able to weather the storm. And also surprisingly, change of strategy. We had one company that was worth sense that became the biggest in terms of the leap. That is Nairobi Business Ventures. Because of change of management and all that, it actually was a stock that really did well. So I'm not encouraging any particular stock because you have to check the time that you're investing in, but just to check on certain things. Which sector am I investing in? How is the leadership? And then what is their strategy around this time? So it is very important to consider some of those things. Thank you. All right, to the viewers, you have some work, definitely. Uh, just don't jump in, of course, but opportunities are there. And as we have spoken in previous Investing Tuesday's webinars, research is important. Don't just jump in, seek advice, and that's why we have the brokerage firms that are there as well. And even the NSC write to us, so that at least you can get to know. Thanks so much, Wagema, for that. Allow me to just read a comment from one of our viewers who has decided to share one of the comments. It's called uh, Midikira Edwin. 2020 challenges activated a call to action. I love that. I had the information, but I didn't act to it. 2020 forced me to get in. I'm smiling all the way for my bright future. Call me Medikira Edwin. I've called you that. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Uh, very lovely comment there. And there are so many lessons, so keep them coming. And I think we're also learning as well from the others. Mr. Munyoncho, let me get to you, because now you're the author, and you're talking about how to save money for investment. So my question is this to you. Is this a year? Of, uh, or would you advise individuals to save or invest during this period now? And I've put you on the spot right there. <laughs> From an economic standpoint, savings is equal to investment. Those who did a bit of economics. <laughs> so if you are saving, <laughs> it's as good as investment. However, practically speaking, yes. when you set aside money, it has, it's, not, it's not saved. So long as you're not earning any return, it is, not, it is not invested in per se. But you need to convert what you have set aside in your account into an asset that gives you a return. Now, for me, any time is time to invest. Wow. Right? Any time mm -hmm. is time to invest. Mm -hmm. But before you invest, and the reason why I wrote the first book on how to save money is because everybody kept on asking me, where is the money to invest? Show us the money. And I said, okay, I'll show you the money. <laughs> and now to take the next step and read the next book that shows how then you invest in the financial markets. So for, for me, uh, minor, it is... Saving should be part and parcel of our lives. It should be part and parcel of everyone who is getting an income, whether, however little, even if it's 10,000 shillings. I know I keep on getting calls from radio, and even 10,000, can I save? I said, yes, you can save because it is the principle that matters. It's not the amount. Because as you save 1,000 bob now, next time you leave that share, because I know it's, it's what I consume, pays me dividends, and is what I will continue buying. Yeah. So to that extent, I want to encourage members, please, Invest, invest, invest. Which assets, which channels, that we can discuss. You may not just want to invest in the securities exchange or in the capital markets. You may want to invest in something else. Yeah. But those are open opportunities out there. Okay. But we need to keep on thinking, how can I have the money that I'm making make money for me? Okay. Not eat all that money, but allow part of it to also give me a return in my life. Wow. Yeah. I think you've mentioned something there. It sounded like uh, very practical. You talked about 10%. Is this something something our viewers should consider that whatever income you're making, get put aside if that 10%? You, if, you if, you if you want to be expressly, quickly, wealthy, 30% is good. 
Yeah, 30% is very good. Even 50, no, as much as you can, the higher the better, because the more you can set aside, the faster you can get your wealth goals. Okay, yeah. okay. Now, 10% is for people who, you know, <laughs> the minimum that you can manage. If you don't have 10%, you can begin with one, two, three, four, you know, but somewhere, get to at least a minimum of 10%. All right, a minimum, that's the minimum. So yeah. if you can save even 50%, the better yes, for you. Yes, the better for you. And, and also, as, you yeah. said about the good book. Yes. Uh, yes. In the Bible, they actually say 20%, and even, uh, I think, uh, you can actually be putting 20% uh, uh, for investing and even all, all these savings. Yeah. All right. Now, I that you have preempted me. Now, you're on the spot now. We're talking about savings and investments. And I would want you to endear to our viewers why the NSC is a viable place to think about investing. Wow. I know. <laughs> yes. So, so, of course, the NSC is a home of opportunity. Mm -hmm. And, and, and at, at the NSC, we have a new vision. And our vision is to be the partner of choice when it comes to investment. So we want, any time you think investment, don't think land. Don't think uh, any <laughs> other thing. You think NSE. <laughs> this is a home of investments. So we are really passionate and we are working very hard towards making that a reality. And that's part of the reasons why we have this show. Uh, maybe two things I can really highlight on and why NSE is a place to go. And one of them is that because one of the things that we have invested heavily and also we've put our mouth where our money, money is. is. Yes. <laughs> so it is in investing in digital. We also as an organization did uh, adapt even with the 2020, uh, I mean the COVID situation, and we've gone digital. And one of the places that we have, uh, we've really done well and we launched last year was a digital academy. That means that you can actually get to learn. I think one of the areas that got disrupted was physical classes. Uh, we've, uh, we've, we've also been seeing where people had to go to physical classes open uh, this year for those who did, but you can also attend classes online. So at the NSC Digital Academy, you can get to learn as much as you can. Why am I emphasizing on education? Uh, there's a saying that says that if you think ignorance is exp if you think education is expensive, Try right. ignorance. Mm -hmm. Try ignorance. I'm speaking from experience. There was one time uh, with my mom, we actually got to invest in the stock market, and she bought a share without too much knowledge. I also was learning at, this, at the time. I was ignorant. And we, we invested uh, back then, when Mumias was doing an IPO, we bought Mumias. At, um, we bought it at, uh, it was going for 45 shillings. So she got a bonus. She put it there like Mr. Monyoncho would encourage. <laughs> we put there back then. <laughs> and then what happened is that it really started going down. It went 40, went 30. But then I was still ignorant. So I didn't know how to invest. I was giving wrong advice to her back then. So what, one of the things I told her is to hold on. That is just a paper loss. And then she cal <laughs> held on to it. It reached 30 shillings. So she's telling me, are you sure? <laughs> and I'm telling her, hold on. If you sell it, you'll actually actualize it. And then my broker told me, hey, just cut your losses. I didn't hear. So you can also be ignorant and very proud, you know. So me, I'm there, I know little knowledge. So that's why I'm saying, if you think education is expensive, try ignorance. And then later, when she turned 60, we were just joking and the mistakes that you've made in life. So you remember the Mumia's shares, and, and that was uh, okay. one of the things that we, la we laughed about because later they were less than two shillings, less than a shilling, and after investing at 45 shillings. So that is very important. But I did encourage her, and we got back. We bought the NSC share at 9, 950, and then it later went to 927, uh, and it made quite some money. So all I'm just saying is that it's nice for you to understand how the market works. So we, in the, at the NSC Digital Academy, you'll get to learn everything how shares work a to z about the capital markets uh, or the stock market you'll get to learn about trades derivatives all of these investments so that would be one area i would highly encourage every person as the nse if you're interacting with us if you already know good and then if you if you are not yet fully sure about what to invest in or how the market works invest there and we have this program investing tuesdays please subscribe to the channel make sure every time it rings and and i know this year we also have some things that are going to be lined up for us we'll also have inspirational tuesdays that will be coming up where we'll get to learn from people their experiences so there, there are the paid courses and also there's this free channel that you can always glean a lot and then when it comes to the market we have many opportunities we've been working hard in 2020 uh, during COVID, we worked harder <laughs> than, <laughs> I mean, than previously. So we are, we are going to be having exciting opportunities. We have an IRIT coming up, a DRIT coming up. We have the USP and, and many, many other goodies. So we want you to keep glued. If you think investments, 
think NSC. I could talk about that until the cam cows I'm come. <laughs> He's going to take over you there. You have finished tomorrow. You have know. to it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to. <laughs> you know, I'm very passionate and, and, I, and with reason. I'm yes. I've invested in this market. I've seen the return. Yeah. I've seen many people also have their lives transformed. So they, uh, if you think investments, think NSC. Absolutely. Wow, my goodness. You are now almost preaching to the converted because uh, uh, now people uh, can really see you know, that. You know, I could tell you now, go to your Mpesa and invest right yes, now. Yes, <laughs> right yes. now, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sheba, I know you have a comment about investing definitely versus uh, what we're talking about, savings. I don't know what your comment is, but I want to add as well a question on that to you about challenges uh, that viewers can expect as they seek to enhance their personal finance and how they can overcome them. So maybe a comment on the savings uh, versus investing. And then let's talk about these challenges that the viewers can expect as they seek to enhance their personal finance. Yeah, Great. I totally believe in investing. And what I would say in case you're out there and you're thinking, where will I get this money to save or invest? One of the things we say at Centronomy, before you even go to look m for money elsewhere, check out, start review your expenses. Is there any opportunity in my expenses at the moment? Take stock, you know. G I need to know where is my money coming from and also where is my money going? And I like how um, Ken also answered the question of, so what percentage should I save my money? And I always tell um, our students at Centronomy, save as much. Actually, what is your goal? Let your goal drive your reason for saving, drive your reason for investing. Don't let any person in the newspaper tell you, oh, invest 10% or invest 50%. Our goals are different, you know? And that's why I usually say, they will say so many things on Google, but do we have the same goals in our lives? No. Possibly not. And therefore, what I need to put in my pot or in my basket is completely different from yours. So how driven am I? Do I know what I want to work for or work towards? And how driven am I to that goal? If I want to own a home, is it, how meaningful is it for me? So at one day I can say, if this is my income, I will now be saving my 30%, 40%, 50%. And no matter what Jerry says, oh, 10% is what they said, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So that is my opinion about get to know your goals, get to know what you really want to achieve, and that will advise you how much you need to sacrifice. And the opportunity is in your expenses. Start with where you spend your money. Now, the next question is about challenges that we may face this year and how to overcome them. Yes, especially when it comes to personal especially finance. Especially when it comes to personal finance and even investing. You see, you mentioned so many opportunities available already that the NSC has been preparing for us in 2020. I read to all those things that you've said. And for someone else, one of the challenge would be, I don't even know what that is. When will I ever know what that is? By the time I know what it is, they will have already made their money. So me, one of the things I say is, it's time to invest in your education. Knowledge is power. Understand what these people are talking about, and then test the market. Second thing I would say, is another challenge that would come is doubt and fear. You know, the fear of loss. What if I try and it happens to me like the way Momias happened to you, you know? And I always say there's always risk for a return that we expect. And you know what? If you don't try it, that's an even bigger risk. You know, there are people who say investing is risky. I'm like, yes. And so is not investing. In fact, that one you are assured of 100% risk. So I would say one challenge to expect is self-doubt, noise from the environment, noise from people around you. But this year what we do is yes, we hear the noise, we learn about what we need to learn, and then we put, we action, we act, we invest, yeah. Wow. Lovely lessons you, there. You, you know, I got fired up when she was, <laughs> she was just speaking. And I just want to talk about the losses, that fear of loss. Yes. At least, you see, even throughout the pandemic, at least you learned. Mm -hmm. You know, that is still something. You know, uh, <laughs> Mr. Monyancho said <laughs> that you can't learn from, uh, okay, let's learn from other people's experiences. Yeah. But also when you do, there's another person, uh, personability you can relate. I can relate to losing money. 
So I'm a safer driver. You know, when I started learning how to drive, God, okay, I, I, I accidentally <laughs> got in an accident. I was so freaked out and all that. But I was told, now you can drive. Because now the fear of failure was gone. So, so don't be afraid to invest just because it's, uh, you don't know how the outcome will be. Thank That's you. true. Thanks a lot for that. There's always a risk if you expect a return. Thanks a lot for that. You know, Mr. Monyoncho, you can't escape this because your book <laughs> is about <laughs> how to invest, especially in the capital markets. Yes. I don't know whether Wagema has milked you dry of all the opportunities, but is there something left? What can you say about what we're discussing? Uh, I, uh, what, one thing I'm very happy that there are new opportunities. I think I've been wanting to sign up for this class because there are new things that have come up in my days. We didn't have derivatives. We didn't have options. They were not there. We were just seeing them in books. Now they have come. I even have Cashflow 201, which talks about the advanced uh, investing. I haven't done anything about it because I don't know how to do it. Yes. <laughs> I will. I will. Before I leave, I'll do that. I will do that. But, but I, I, I want to just to help the investor out there. I know many times they keep on imagining whether um, the, the kind of risk profile that they keep, keep on looking at and wondering, will I be able to get more or less? If I, can I get a risk-free asset at least so that I can be able to invest? Those are opportunities. I know he hasn't spoken too much about the bonds uh, that, that you can invest in because they are already available. You can have a 12.5% bond for the next 16, 16, 20 years, the infrastructure bonds that are available. That uh, and any investor out there who says, okay, fine, I want something slightly more safer, they can actually go and invest in, 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 um, in, in, in the bonds. I think that's a good opportunity for anyone who has got finances that are, 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 uh, are uh, what do you call it, uh, free, that can be invested. I mean, f where I come from, the experience for me is that if you are employed near full time, I think let your money work for you. If you're not employed near full time, use your money to do other businesses because you can make much more money than here in doing business. Depending, first of all, if the business is a business you like and it's a business you understand. Just the same thing you have spoken. You must have knowledge in whatever you're doing because you can make plenty, uh, much more money when you're using, uh, when you're doing what you call in trading business. Trading shares could give you 30, 40 percent, but you can get 100 percent if you're doing buying and selling business. But you need to be there full time. Okay. Otherwise, you end up losing and you end up not appreciating what you're doing. All right. I yeah. think those are very good insights. And, you know, I just want to put all of you, the panelists, on the spot now. Because I can tell, you know, yes, we have talked a lot about the principles. We have talked a little bit about some of the guidelines we need to have uh, from uh, looking at our mindsets, uh, looking at uh, the savings culture we have, and really even having an introspective conversation about even savings and all that. And so putting you on the spot will be this. And I'm not saying that, you know, because our viewers there, I know they're hungry for some people, as, uh, uh, what you say, I don't even know, you know, and uh, I, at least you're giving them one of the ways is, you know, go invest in knowledge because it's, it's also part of uh, investing in yourself. But are there some gold mines that we can really see? And of course, for you, Agema, it will be a gold mine. I know sometimes you try to avoid mentioning some stocks and all that, but I have to put you on the spot because we have trained people over the last Investing Tuesdays on matters investing in the capital markets and why it's a viable option. But is there a gold mine that you can tell, my goodness, if you guys don't invest in this this month, you're, you're going to lose. Uh, that's for you on the spot and for you, Sheba, as well, and Ken. Are there some gold mines? Of course, not only just in the capital markets. Are there some gold mines that you can see and people haven't tapped on them and you're like, if anybody has eyes, they better see. Mm -hmm. That's putting you on the spot. Sheba, do you want to go first? Um, <laughs> I won't share gold mines. Let me share gold tips. Okay, gold tips then, all right. Yeah, <laughs> let me share gold tips. Okay. Because I'm very goal driven all and right. all investors should be goal driven because all the money that you have is not just for one thing, right? So what I always say at in our 101 class, what is your goal, right? Because there are only three reasons. We only have three um, goals any investor may want to may want to have a reason to invest in. And the first one is a goal for capital preservation. You know, where you have some money in your pocket, in your bank, and you're thinking, this one, I know I will need it in three months. You know, it's also good to be real with yourself. If I know I will need this money in three months, I will not go and buy gold. You get what I mean? It means my objective is a capital preservation goal. 
And so I need to ask myself if my objective or my goal for this money is to preserve it because I know I will need it in less than 12 months, then I need to ask myself what are the options available for me to preserve my money. Secondly, I may have a goal where I'm saying, I have this amount of money, I don't need it anytime soon, but I want it to generate income for me. You see, that's a very clear goal. So I won't go and put it in a money market. I won't go and put that money in a savings account. So I need to ask myself, okay, so what options are available for income generation? Is, that, is it that business? Is it coming here and buying some, some stocks, right, of different businesses because some of them are assuring me of dividends, of income? Is it rental property, for example? Is it that I-rate, for example, that we're being told about? And then finally, there's the other reason or goal where I'm saying, I have this amount of money, I don't need it anytime soon, I just want it to go and grow and grow and grow. And that's a capital growth goal. If that's it, then I need to come and sit here, yeah, and find out what are all those options. Because it means I'm thinking about growth of 30%, I'm thinking about growth of even more than that. I'm thinking about giving time to this money. Not one year, not two. We are talking about a proper long-term goal. So if I'm thinking about that, those are the goal tips I would share with all investors out there. Every time you want to invest, ask yourself, what do I want this money to do? Is it for preservation? Is it for income generation? Or is it for capital growth? Wow, lovely. Or do it's I want to buy a house? <laughs> Therefore, <laughs> I will invest in... There's a share here which I have been eyeing. Which one is that? CIC. <laughs> CIC. CIC, I right. want to buy a few... Because I want in the next five years, I'm sure it will be moved from two shillings to about <laughs> four or five. <laughs> so if I buy about um, a million shares, mm -hmm. you know, you, I mean, you'll be a millionaire. Yeah. And, and why CIC? Why? I mean, the corporate movement, I think there is a great opportunity there for mm -hmm. anybody to invest in the in the cooperative movement. Yes. But for me, the best share where the, it's, it's, the, it's the greatest opportunity to invest is where you feel you are benefiting directly. For example, yes. if you take tea, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> where would you go? <laughs> Do you know where you'd go? Which share would you buy? That one. <laughs> Am I allowed to mention it? No. Okay. okay. Fine. Uh, so <laughs> if I... If, if you, I know, you know all these are our if, clients? All no these problem. are our listed clients. I have not mentioned the name. <laughs> all right. So thank if, you. If, if I want to feel that my car is being filled well, okay. and I enjoy that, uh, uh, the product, yeah. so you know where I'll go. Yeah. Now, that makes you such a personal investor. Even when you go to that institution, you say, you know, I'm part of this I'm part of this company. So I even am. as I give my money for the exchange of that product... <laughs> I know there's a dividends coming for me at the end of the year. No, you're that talking in parables. <laughs> <laughs> no, they say, they say, if you can buy it, yes. yeah. you can own it. Yes. Lovely. And that's why we go to the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Because if I can buy product X, yeah. I better own that company. Then. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. And once you do that, uh -huh. I mean, if your heart is there. Yeah. So we are told where you are. Pressure is. Yes. That's why your heart is also. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> so you'll do everything and anything to ensure that that business or that product or the institution running the product is doing well. Wow, lovely, lovely. That, that, is, that is the aspect that you want to think about. Okay, yes. okay. So again, my, I, I know I want to jump into you and I know you're going to play safe, but before I do that, <laughs> uh, let me just read a comment then give it to you. Someone knew me in Mombasa. You're watching from Mombasa and you're saying, this is my first time on this channel and you guys are really inspiring my financial life. I wish I knew this earlier. You're not late because uh, all these comments, uh, all this content is still on our YouTube channel, on our Facebook channel. So you can go revisit, sit down, take all the notes so that you're up to date. And of course, welcome again, subscribe and make sure you have that bell on so that you can always be getting this content. We're going over to you now. Yes. <laughs> you know, as are you going speaking, to give gold mines or are you going to go to give gold tips? Okay, so, so <laughs> I'm, I'm turning between, <laughs> but allow me then to, 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 to change it a little bit. Okay and to say that you are the gold mine. You know, sometimes we, we look at uh, what can I invest in outside there, but I would invest in yourself first. You are that person that has the, all these different abilities. 
uh, because I, I believe so strongly that in life, it is the, val the value you give out is the value that you get. Not just when you go to maybe start investing in the stock market, but yourself as a person. And that's why I was very passionate about education. Educate yourself. Learn. Because uh, the company that is doing well today may not be doing well tomorrow. It's not always for, uh, I mean, it shouldn't always be the case. But if you can be smart enough to know when to change, because that's one of the key lessons I took from 2020, the ability to adapt. So invest in yourself. So you are that gold mine. And then when you, you are that gold mine, then you will also get to see which opportunities are there. So maybe some tips on, on how to do it. I, we always refer to the guru of investments, Warren Buffett. Mm. Of course, and people really admire how he made a lot of money. And one of the tips that he had is that he invests in the long term. Don't just always invest in the short term. Mm. Many people are short-sighted in, in the sense that many people have this, it's like a conundrum. When you are, you're, you're, uh, they say that when people are going out, that's when others are getting in. Mm -hmm. And when others are getting in, that's when they're they are getting out. out. Mm -hmm. So when do you know the right time? But it's good to have a long-term view and a long-term strategy. That means that you keep investing. Come rain, come shine. You do not eat uh, once a day and then you say, that you mm -hmm. No, tomorrow you're back at it. Mm -hmm. So I would really encourage a culture of saving and investments. That means that you are always saving, you are always investing. What are the opportunities? And then when you are op when you are investing, have like a basket. Uh, you talked about a portfolio. So in the portfolio, that means it's already diversified. So you are buying a bit of this, a bit of that, and that discipline is really the key. So mine is really to encourage financial discipline, both in the saving and also in the investing side, so that you have a goal, you have a plan. It's not just haphazard. And that's the biggest trouble we have even with Kenyans. Everybody had Safaricom people rushed in. Mm -hmm. People bought at five shillings, it went to eight shillings, two shillings, they had not saved, they were taking loans, they got hit. They ran from the market. But now if you can have a discipline, a long-term view, and then you keep investing, that's really the key. So that every time, come rain, come shine. As you eat every day, invest every day. First in yourself, and also in the stock market, discover opportunity right here. <laughs> Asante. Mr. Manyoncha, I can see the mic is close to you. Do you have something that you want to bring up? Well, no, I'm just seeing his <laughs> excitement. So I'm, <laughs> I'm saying whatever here should be sitting in, in, a, in a class uh, on, of, of his own where he can be able to train. But I was just going to say that um, above any other stock, I think anyone out, out there, one of the, the stocks they can invest is this institution because there's a stock in this institution. Yeah. They can put the money in. Mm -hmm. And you see, this is not an institution that uh, can just go to sleep. It's not possible. Yeah. Being, we call it the thermometer, of the economy, mm -hmm. it barometer. Is that is the it barometer. Oh yes, the barometer. Sorry, not the barometer. barometer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The barometer. I think, even, of the I think even a thermometer can still work. You know, <laughs> cold or hot, isn't it? Yes. So uh, hot is the, the the economy is running. Cold is is freezing. So yes. barometer of I, so, so, no problem. <laughs> but this this being the the the, the 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 institution that actually monitors the movement mm -hmm. in the economy, it's an institution that is highly unlikely to face what do you call closures? Mm -hmm. And therefore, it's an assured stock that someone can go and get. Yeah. You can start here, start buying the, the shares from this institution mm -hmm. and see how it runs because it is really the mother of all, uh, I can call it the mother of all institutions that have invested in, this in, 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 the, in the economy. Wow. Yeah. Lovely. You know, we only have about four minutes to end and I want to give a concluding remarks. Uh, so I want to read a comment from Ann Kim and she says this, that financial literacy is a gold mine. That's a good one. Um, I don't know whether it's, that's a gold tip or gold mine. I, you know, I got something new now from Sheba. Now. <laughs> anyway, uh, gentlemen and lady, I, I would want this uh, for our viewers from your end. If you're given an opportunity, which I'm going to give you now for about 30 seconds to give the most, the most important thing everybody needs to think through this year, 2021, when it comes to matters personal finance and investing. 30 seconds, I know you've said a lot. It doesn't matter, but this is just a conclusion on your end. What is this one thing you would do and endear them so that at least they can have, let me use the word prosperous 2021, despite whatever may come forth. And you know, this one, because uh, there's somebody who speaks about finances almost every minute, because everybody who's reading his book is reading about finances. So Mr. Monyoncho, I'm giving you that opportunity. And as you speak, I want you to look straight there to that uh, camera because those people will be feeling you in their eyes. Please go ahead. 2021, 
I would like you, first of all, to understand your net worth. If you can understand your net worth, then you would know how to move forward. Identify what are your assets, and by the way, your car on loan is not an asset, until it is in your own name, it's not an asset. Even having a car could be a liability. I mean, that's another long class we'll take, but look at your assets, look at your liabilities, find the net difference, divide by your expenses and see how long you can survive. That is equal to your wealth. That's how wealthy you are. Now, how wealthy you are determines how long you will survive the next pandemic. And I'm not saying there's one coming, but it will at least help you to determine how long will I survive should another pandemic come. This is a real thing. It's better to prepare for an opportunity that will come. Thank My you. My goodness, lovely, lovely. Sheba, do you want to go next? Please. 2021, learn and do. Learn and do. It's all about action. That's it. Wow. Hey. She picked it from, from me. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> no, you know you're the one who also took a lot of their, their tips later. So you, so you better get one from somewhere. Eh? <laughs> All right. I, I actually, <laughs> that, that's what I honestly heard. Anyway, I, and, and, and nothing beats uh, learning. And yeah. maybe I can define learning. Because yeah. sometimes you are so much used to learning, we even don't know what is the meaning of learning. Mm -hmm. Learning is not the increase of knowledge, yet it comes with increase of knowledge. Yeah. Learning is not increase in terms of understanding, though it comes with that. It's not more information. It's part of it. It's not just being wise or deemed wise. No, it's about action. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I learned about learning, and the definition of learning is the increase in knowledge that translates in change in behavior. Yeah. So unless it's change in behavior, which is action, yeah, there's no learning that has taken place. So let us learn and let us act. Above all, it's even better to, to take more action as you learn. Learn by doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, learn by doing. It's better than just the theory, but also by doing. And so mine is really to thank everybody. And please get hooked on to this Investing Tuesdays <laughs> and download the NSE app to take action because you can actually get to invest in the stock market. So be with us. We are here for you and we are ready to actually take good care of you and help you discover opportunity. Asante. All right. Thanks a lot, Bagim. At least you got something out of that. Uh, well, to our viewers, I think one word is underlined there. There is no end to learning. There is no end to learning. And of course, even when you grab a book from Mr. Monyoncho, you're also learning a lot of things to go ahead. Mr. Monyoncho as well has declared that he's still learning as well because we have new things popping up, especially in the markets when it comes to derivatives and all that. So you want to follow all these particular key channels that will be giving you information. And we also want to thank all our partners that have come across today. I just want to give a shout out to somebody I know, and I think Sheba, this must be somebody you uh, know as well. It's called Waidaka Gatumi, is he familiar? Yeah, that, that's, that's our CEO at Centronomy. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's watching. So, hello, <laughs> sir. I see you. He sent a shout out. That means uh, he's checking you up. Now, um, and I believe that uh, that has been uh, really insightful to you. Let me just read this comment from somebody called Thriving Ngogi. I like your name, Thriving, and I hope this is going to be your 2021. Thank you for all such information. 2020 taught me to invest and diversify my risks. None can end this conversation better than what you have said, Mr. Thriven. And so we want to come to a close because it's top of the hour, but to remind you that Investing Tuesdays is here. And so this is the first Tuesday of February, so the second, I mean the third Tuesday as well, we'll be here right away to speak on another amazing topic, which, which as well you can suggest. So also, of course to our guests as well, thank you so much for your time. And uh, we look forward to really learning from you. Uh, we shall be following them as well from their handles, whatever they say, everything else so that we can grow. Now, I feel like I shouldn't end, but I have to. So bye-bye for now. See you next time. Investing Tuesdays. Bye-bye.